Hello everyone. I would like to continue with solving for fractional equation lesson. In previous uh, lesson, we have solved for this equation right here. Okay. In solving for x in this equation, we combine the two numerators because we already have the same denominators. And then after that, we multiply by the denominator to get rid of it. Uh, distribute this term. Be careful with the negative sign. And then we end up with this uh, linear equation and it's so simple to solve for x. And then we have x equal to 6 over 5. Okay, so for this particular fractional equation, this is the only method that I recommend. And uh, I would like to uh, perform the, uh, the check steps to see whether or not left-hand side equal to right-hand side. And again, we are going to approach it without the u the use of calculators, okay? So let's check uh, for a uh, uh, solution for x without the calculator as well. So it's 2 times 6 over 5 plus 5, the whole thing divided by 7, subtract 3, multiply by 4 times 6 over 5, subtract 7 over 7. So we make sure that we got everything substituting just correctly. So now I'm going to uh, multiply this in. And at the same time, I will take common denominators. Okay, so just keep in mind that I am, uh, at the same time, I want to convert this to uh, uh, common denominator so I can add this two fraction. Also, the same thing here, so I can subtract this. So this should give me 37 over 5. The whole thing is still divided by 7. Okay. And subtract this with 3, multiply by negative 11 over 5. The whole thing divided by 7. So let's see what we get. We got 37 over 5 divided by 7. So that means I multiply by uh, 1 over 7. But I think I better write it step by step. I don't want everyone to get confused here. So 37 over 5 divided by 7 for the very first one. And the second one, what I have is I should have this in bracket as uh, you take 3, you multiply by negative 11. You should have negative 33 over 5. And then you also divide this by 7. Okay, So then I should have it as 37 over 5 times 1 over 7. This should give me um, subtract negative 33 over 5 times 1 over 7. So what do I get? Okay, so I get uh, 37 over 35 subtract uh, 33 over 35, but it is a negative. So then we'll, we'll make it into 37 over 35 plus 33 over 35. That gives it 70 over 35. 70 divided by 35 gives me 2. So therefore, this is exactly equal to the right-hand side and equal to 2. Okay, so I uh, therefore, x is equal to uh, 6 over 5 and is a correct solution. Okay, I thought I performed this... Uh, uh, check step to make sure that uh, we got the correct solution for x. Okay, and at the same time review the step for for upper, uh, fractional operations for everyone. Okay, so let me continue on with our example number five, and I would like you to again remember what I said in previous video. We analyze our denominators. That's the very first step in solving for fractional equation is to take a look at the denominator to see what the best method that we should apply for this. Okay. So before I continue with example number five, I would like you to take a look at example number four. Example number four, 
I'm sorry, I keep repeating myself because I, I want to show you the analysis. Okay, so if you, if any mathematical problems that you work with, you can analyze your question. From analyzing your question, you can figure out what step to use, and then you already have way through the solution already. Okay, so I know solving for fractional equation is quite a daunting task sometimes because we have to involve fraction, we have to involve denominator, so many steps are quite advanced. So analyze it and just go with the simplest approach, okay? So right here you see you are having the same denominators. What does the same denominator tell you? Okay, if I have the same denominator, I can go ahead and add or subtract the fraction by performing the step with the numerators and keep the denominator the same, right? So that's how it is. So that's why we write everything as the same denominator and we perform whatever step needed to do for the numerators. In this case, we are having the same denominator to work with. And then after you do this, you multiply both sides by the same denominator to get rid of it. So that's example number four. Okay, but when it comes to example number two, I mean, the, this example number five. Then we have three and four here. Okay, so that means you must find the lowest common denominators. To find the lowest common denominators, in this case, three and four should be 12. Okay, so I would like you to watch my pen, how I write step by step along with what I'm saying, okay, next to you, along with my explanation. Excuse me, just give me a few seconds to get to drink a bit of my tea. Like I said, tea goes really well with mathematics. But sometimes it won't go well with old age, okay? It, uh, math doesn't go well with old age. Okay, so the lowest common denominator is 12. Okay, before we do that, I would like you to take a look at the number 6. Okay, the number 6. It's just equal to 6. But then you may as well write it as 6 over 1. I write, strongly recommend that. Write it as 6 over 1. Okay, so then you count how many fractions that you have. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I'm going to write this. 1, 2, 3. Okay, then what denominator should I have? I should have, I should achieve 12 here. I should achieve 12 here. I should achieve 12 there. So now you are going to perform the step called equivalent fraction. Equivalent fraction means that you are going to compare your original fraction with the fraction that you want to change it to by basing it on the numerator. So here you have 3 and you, you need 12. So how do you get from 3 to 12 with the multiplication operation? That means that you must multiply 3 by 4. Okay, so I will write it here. I multiply 3 by 4 to get to 12. So that means I do the exact same thing for the numerator. See that? Okay, so I do the exact same thing for the numerator. So the same approach, take a look at this denominator, 12, and compare it with the second fraction. Denominator is 4. From 4, I need to get to 12. So I need to multiply this by 3, right? So you write down that I multiply this by 3. 4 times 3 will give me 12. That means I need to take 3 and multiply it to the top. Okay, so now we compare the last one. This is 1, go to 12. So what do you multiply by? You multiply 1 by 12. That means you must take 6 and multiply that with 12. You see, this is called the equivalent fractions. Okay, this is called the equivalent fraction. Equivalent fraction means that you are turning them into the same denominators. 
So how do you turn that into the same denominators? By multiplying the denominator with a number that will make it the same denominators. So 3 times 4 give 12. Okay, so because you multiply 4 with 3, you must multiply 4 to the numerator as well. For the second one, you multiply 3 with 4. Therefore, you need to multiply 3 with 2x plus 7 as well to get 12 as the same denominator. You multiply 1 by 12, therefore you just multiply 6 by 12. Okay, so now do you see that it's kind of simplify a little bit more to, to get to a bit of more similar to example number 4. So that means I'm going to combine my uh, fraction on this side. Combine fraction means I subtract the numerators because what is the purpose of getting the um, denominator to be the same? It's because I want to subtract the numerators. Okay, so there it is. Now you subtract the numerators, but you are going to multiply both sides by 12 for me now to get rid of the denominators. So you see, and that will cancel with that, that we cancel with that, and then what do we have left? We are left with 4 times 5x plus 19, subtract 3 times 2x plus 7, equal to 72. All right. Okay, so let me ask you this question. And I know that I, I won't be able to hear the answer from you, but I asked this question for you to think, okay? So up to this point, you probably tell me that, oh, this is very lengthy. Uh, I can go ahead and I can uh, skip this step and immediately uh, get into uh, what, uh, I don't have to write this step down. Yes, you don't have to. However, let me ask you this question. The negative three, okay? With involve the subtract 3, over the years of teaching, and I can tell you that I have been teaching uh, mathematics for um, how long now? I think I really have to count. It's more than 25 years, okay? So that's why I kind of mentioned to everyone, <laughs> old age. <laughs> when uh, when I get older, I think the left brain, the left brain skip to the right brain, and they, they start missing each other, and then... Uh, uh, I start making uh, silly errors and I realize that when I'm getting older I have to work slower and I also have to do it to do math step by step that means I have a slower approach to mathematics as well okay so the key here is the subtraction many students will forget this is a negative 3 distribute into each of these terms so if I write this step down like this, I know that this negative 3 multiply with each of these inside brackets. Okay, so that my experience that I want to uh, uh, transfer to you, that sometimes if you take a slower approach to math, it's just a few seconds to write this step down. But now I know right away that I take negative 3 times everything inside this bracket. Because if you skip, you you tend to forget that this is a negative 3 multiplied by, okay? So let's see what we have next, okay? So we will have 20x here, okay? And 19 times, uh, is that 5 plus 19 or 19 plus 9? Okay, I'm sorry. See, I already won everyone ahead. Like I told myself that math... Does math go with old age? I don't think so. I, uh, at, at, at least in my case. Okay, so I hope uh, I take away that confusion when I put 19. I don't know why I put 19. Okay, um, again, I uh, apologize. Okay, so this will should give me 36. Okay, so this should give me negative 6x. This should give me negative 21, and it's equal to 72. All right, so let's combine the term. That and that should give me a 14x. 
and this and this should give me uh, 15 so then I should do this okay so now you know exactly what I have to do I do that so I can get rid of the 15 and then 14x equal to 72 minus 15 should give me 57 okay now I divide both sides by 14 that and that I should have the answer as x equal to 57 over 14 I can tell you that we got the correct uh, answer in this case all right so let's um 57 over 14 excuse me let me adjust the screen again okay so then what i am going to uh, say next is whether or not I want to double check the solution. Okay, so instead of uh, perform the check step, I would like to show you another method. Okay, you probably don't want to uh, so many methods in, in just one question, right? Okay, the purpose here is to uh, show everyone that in working with fractional equation, there's a few approach to it. And if I present them all to you, you can figure out which one is the best uh, that you want to choose to use. Okay, so let me rewrite this question again, and then I will show you a different uh, method. So when rewrite this, I should have the equation as uh, don't forget is uh, OH getting to your professor again okay so 5x plus 9 divided by 3 subtract 2x plus 7 divided by 4 equal to 6 so let me double check that that I have been writing it down correctly all right equal to 6 so let's say you say I don't want to work with the common denominators this is um, quite um, complicated so what I will ask you to do is uh, 3 and 4 okay 3 and 4 12 is the lowest common multiple right you multiply both sides of this equation by 12 okay do that right away okay so when you multiply both sides of this equation by 12 then you are going to take 12 multiply this and you take 12 multiply that okay on this side you end up with 72 Okay, so when you multiply this, what do you get? That cancel, you get 4 left. That and that cancel, you got 3 left. Okay, so this method basically saying that you have common denominators of 3 and 4 as 12. Okay, or you don't even have to think that it's common denominator. It's just take 3 times 12. Okay, take 3 times 12. Then you multiply both sides of the equation by the product of these two. Okay, yeah, then you don't have to perform the equivalent fraction step. That's what I am trying to say. Okay, so let's continue with this. I will have 20x plus 36 subtract 6x minus 21 equals 72 and then everything is just the same right the same as we have done before I should end up with the 14x 
uh, plus 15 equal to 72 and then 14x plus 15 subtract 15 and this and this cancel out I got 14x equal to uh, 57 so then x is equal to 57 divided by 14 so exact same as I have uh, uh, answer uh, for the other method that I show you okay so 57 over 14 okay so what's the difference between this method 2 and this method 1 So this is the method one. Okay, so this one, you see, you have to perform the equivalent fraction right here. So it's probably a bit confusion right here, confusing right here. But because of an equation, you are solving for x, and it is an equation, so you can be a bit flexible. So the trick I would do right here is to take the product of 3 and 4, okay, then I multiply both sides by that product. 12 multiplied by this, multiplied by this. And don't forget that you have to understand the distributive rule very well. Take 12, multiply each term inside uh, this bracket. So you take 12, multiply by this fraction, and take 12, multiply by this fraction. By multiplying with the product of this two, you immediately get rid of the denominators. And then you don't have to perform the equivalent fraction step. All right. So why do I save this last method to the to the very last of the lesson? Because I call save the last, save the best for last. Okay. So to me, this is the best approach in solving for any complicated fractional equation. Okay. So solving for complicated fractional equation. What you do is you are going to try to find the lowest common multiple of your 3 and 4. So in this case, it's 12. Then you multiply both sides by that number. Okay, When you multiply both sides by the number, you need to distribute the term correctly. So take 12, multiply this fraction, take 12, multiply this fraction. By multiplying this, you understand that you take 12 divided by 3, that will give you 4. 12 divided by 4 gives you 3. And immediately the fraction is, the denominator is gone. And then all you have to do is just dealing with the uh, linear equation to solve for. Okay? So, and this is uh, the other approach, which I think is quite a common, that, that this is actually quite common. Every lesson that you learn in solving fractional equation, not having the same denominator, the professor and the teacher will probably show you this step. Okay? And what I show you, it's just a shortcut. A shortcut. Okay? And I guarantee that the shortcut, if you know what to do, then it should always be correct. All right. Okay. I hope everyone is uh, okay working with this. And I do have a few exercises here, and I would like everyone to try the exercise and then uh, uh, check with the solution online. And this is actually quite interesting, okay? And don't forget that uh, this is question number five. I can show you a trick here that you multiply both sides by 10, all right? Yeah, to get rid of the denominators right away. Okay. Um, I still have a few minutes. Let's see what I need to say to everyone. Okay, so method number two is a lot easier. Method number one is involving the equivalent fraction. Okay, so how do I conclude this lesson for everyone? So this lesson, I'm sorry, I need to scroll back to the very beginning of the lesson for the entire um, uh, lecture and of uh, this uh, topic, okay? So this topic is solving for fractional equation. And I have like five examples to work with. So the first one is just a simple uh, distributed rule and then simplify both sides, uh, isolate the unknown. And then what we have, we end up with the fractional equation for x. We use our cal calculator to check. Okay, 
For the second one, we cannot distribute anything here. Okay, we also cannot combine these two fraction. Cannot combine these two fraction, and we see that we set the same denominator for x. So we might as well perform the step of uh, isolating the x and in the end. You can just add the two coefficients for x here, right? And uh, the, the two coefficients happen to be the fractions. You can use a calculator to solve for it, or you can just go ahead and add it if you know uh, how to add fraction. Then you divide it by uh, the same fraction to get rid of the coefficient in front of x. And uh, we have the answer. OK. But this question. You can go ahead and use the common denominators and, and do the equivalent fraction step, okay? which is a little bit more complicated. And for the, this example, okay, the easiest method is to multiply both sides by 9. At the same time, get rid of the denominators. And for this uh, approach right here, multiply each inside the bracket, you see it's even more complicated. And for example, number four, same denominator, so multiply both sides by that same denominator. Example number five, okay, is to find the lowest common denominators, perform the equivalent fraction, okay. However, you can skip that by find the lowest common denominators and then multiply both sides by that common denominator right away and distribute correctly so that you can get rid of the denominator. All right, okay. So I uh, hope uh, it's okay um, uh, that you uh, get what I try to explain to everyone. All right, okay, so if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to send me an email. Thank you, everyone.